In today's news, I finally finished relisting my Poshmark closet. Okay, I am so sorry. That was uncalled for. Won't nobody love you the way they should. Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good. Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park and I am a part-time reseller on platforms such as Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, Kitizen, and ThreadUp. And on this channel, we talk about reselling, particularly from the perspective of a part-time reseller. And if you are brand new to my channel today, thank you so much for stopping by. Welcome, and I hope you consider joining our little community here. I do post at least two videos every week. So if you're interested in these kinds of what's sold videos, I do have one every week. I also have tips and tricks videos, thrift hauls, all that kind of stuff. So so I would really appreciate it if you did consider subscribing and you can hit that notification bell as well because that's the only way that YouTube will let you know every time I upload new content. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about what sold in the week of October 12th through the 18th. And we're going to be talking about some of the different things that led to the sales week that I had. So let me kind of start big picture first. First of all, this was a pretty good week for me and it was for a number of reasons. One, I did finally finish relisting my entire Poshmark closet. If you've been watching my channel, you know that this is a project that I've been working on for quite some time. And when I finished, I finally went back to look at how long it took me. It took me three months, you guys. And it's because I had over 700 listings and I literally went through and relisted every single one. And obviously a good number of those have sold along the way. And next week I'll actually come out with a video about that whole process of relisting my entire Poshmark closet, why I did it, what I got out of it, and how many sales I made through it. And I really was happy with, you know, the amount of sales that came through as a result, and especially with the ability to get rid of some older inventory. But it did take some time, let me tell you that. And I think the second reason why my sales were pretty great for this week is because I ran a sale. I ran a celebratory, I finished relisting my entire Poshmark closet sale, and it did pretty well for me. Thank you to those of you who are watching who came out and supported me by purchasing something from my Poshmark closet. Those of you who saw maybe my post on Instagram about it, you guys are amazing and I could not have had, you know, the sales week that I had this week without you. Um, and like I said, big picture, this week I made a net sales of over $600. And if you know anything about my videos, I always talk about my net sales instead of my gross sales because I don't know about you, I don't care what your sales number look like, what I care about is what went into your bank account. So I'm always going to share with you my numbers after Poshmark fees, shipping discounts, shipping in general, all that kind of stuff, just because that's honestly personally what I care about and I think that that's what really matters because some people spend a lot on their inventory or they have a lot of overhead costs and they might be throwing some numbers at you but that's not what's going in their bank account that's not what's really important so um, I don't even actually know my gross sales number like I don't even keep track of that that's how little it matters to me so we're gonna go through and talk about this sales week if you do enjoy what sold videos like these I will have a playlist down in my description below with all of the what sold videos I've ever made that way you can kind of binge watch those and see what items have been selling for me and for how much and you can also kind of like see the evolution of my reselling journey if you go all the way back to like the first ones it's kind of it's pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting to say the least. So if you are excited about, I'm scooting over because I need to leave room here for the videos of the lovely things that sold. But if you are excited to see what sold this week, hit that like button if you don't mind, as it does help out my channel and this video in particular a whole lot. And let's get into it. Warning. I am currently editing this video and I'm finding that I'm pretty chit chatty so if you're not into that this is where I bid you adieu. All of my seemingly off topic stories do have a purpose and you'll probably learn something from them but again if you're not about long videos this is where we bid farewell and finally you've been warned. So we're gonna start with Monday October 12th which I believe was what some people call Columbus Day or Indigenous People Day. Um, I was thinking to myself, this is going to be a good sales day because one, I was running a sale on my eBay store and two, oftentimes those kinds of holidays, you know, people associate them with like shopping. A lot of like shopping malls are having really great sales and whatnot. And I was really looking forward to great Monday sales. I had a $0 sales day, <laughs> so it did not go as planned. The week did not start off great. Let me know in the comments below how that day was for you. I Yeah, like I feel like a lot of times like 4th of July or 
I don't know, I can't think of any more right now, but I feel like a lot of times I tend to get some pretty decent sales because people are thinking about shopping and they're just accustomed to there being some really great discounts out there and I had none. So let me know, let me know how that went for you. But on Tuesday, I had a pretty good sales day and it was largely in part because of two sales. So the first thing to sell over on Poshmark was a seven piece bundle. And it was, I think honestly, as a result of closet clear out. Um, so the person liked one item and what I do for my closet clear out method, and I do have a whole video on this and I'll link that right here, but I put the item in a bundle and I left a comment within the bundle, letting the person know that because today was closet clear out, I could drop the price to X amount and Poshmark would pay for discounted shipping and would they be interested? And as a result, this guy started just like throwing more stuff in his bundle and then he made me an offer it was kind of low, but it was also on a lot of stuff that I had in my four for $25 sale, which is just kind of like this everlasting sale that I have of stuff that just probably won't sell very well on its own. And just some pieces that I've had for a really long time. So I was more than happy with his offer and I let go of those seven pieces for his $75 offer. So let's get into what those pieces were. The first one was an item in my four for $25 sale and it was this Banana Republic gray button up shirt in a size medium. I had relisted that and it took 60 days since I relisted it for it to sell. That's something that I got from the cook's son of a restaurant that my brother used to work at. Tell everyone what you do, folks. You never know where you can get inventory from. So the second thing to sell was this Oscar de la Renta gray sweater um, with like a window pane print in a size medium. That was relisted and it sold 84 days after relisting it. That I did pick up at like a Goodwill or something. Oscar de la Renta for men, honestly, does not do super well. Like, People are not really looking for it. It sits and sits and sits, and it's just not worth very much. Like you'd be lucky to get $25 for one sweater. I originally used to get super excited about finding Oscar de la Renta for men because Oscar de la Renta itself is like a wonderful brand. Like women wear their gowns and stuff at the Oscars and whatnot, but I think they're kind of ready to wear line for men not not worth it so i did get that at a goodwill a long time ago when i thought that it would be worth more than it was but it turned out it wasn't really worth that much and there's another one coming up here in a second the next thing to sell was this banana republic gray striped sweater in a size small i think that also came from the cook sun and it took 55 days to sell after being relisted um the next piece was another oscar de la renta piece that i also got at a goodwill over a year ago at this point. And it was this yellow ribbed crew neck sweater. And this one sold 31 days after being relisted. This next piece was a polo by Ralph Lauren classic fit blue polo shirt. It was like a short sleeve polo in a size small. This one, I worked out a consignment deal with one of my friends from church. And so I had, you know, a few bucks into this. I did relist it and it took 23 days to sell. And then the next thing I think came from that same friend that I worked out a consignment deal with. And I had it in my four for $25 sale because there was no brand on it. It was nice. It was classy looking, but there was no brand. So it was, you know, a hard sell. And I knew that I would probably sit on it for some time, but I still listed it because, you know, you know, it's like I knew I could make a few bucks off of it. It was this red and blue striped v-neck sweater in a size small, extremely lightweight. I relisted it and it sold 26 days after I relisted it. And the last item in this bundle was this Banana Republic light blue button-up shirt in a size medium. That one sold 19 days after being relisted. And I think that that was also one of the items from my friend who I worked out a consignment deal with. And that was back in, I wanna say March, February or March. So even though I have relisted those pieces since listing them the first time, it's not like I've had them for over a year or anything. So um, I am happy to move, especially those button-up shirts in the time that I did because those are a hard sell. I feel like there are just a ton of them floating around on all reselling platforms. So unless you've got like a really spectacular brand or unless it's like new with tags, they're just not worth, you know, more than bins prices, honestly, because you're going to sit on them for quite some time and you're probably not going to get very much for them. So the buyer sent me an offer of $75 on those seven pieces. And like I said, I was totally okay with that because two of them were in my four for $25 sale. And the other ones, I was just so sick of looking at. Like I was like, please, please just get, get out of my house. Of my so, house. So, so he definitely took them off of my hands. I made $60 after Poshmark's fees. So the next thing to sell on Poshmark was this Fabletics black drawstring mini athletic skirt in a size medium. This one did sell using my closet clear out method and it sold for $15 
$10. And so after Poshmark paid for shipping and all that, I made a profit of $12 on that. And that is something that came from a local consignment store. I reached out to them towards the end of like the shelter in place about setting up an opportunity for me to shop from their storage unit privately, like by myself without anyone else there because, you know, we were in the thick of it. And so they agreed and they let me shop by the garbage bag and I paid $50 per garbage bag, which really came out to like 80 cents ish. That was kind of like the average price of how much I paid per item. Um, and then there was one day where I went really heavy on the shoes and that shoe day, I would say I paid a little less than $2 for, for the shoes. But then I got shoes, you know, even after that, like I went to this place probably a total of five or six times. So I did get shoes, you know, on other days outside of that first day where I got a ton. And for those, I would say the average price was even less than the, you know, $2 mark. It was probably under a dollar as well. So, um, this skirt, I, had less than a dollar into and I made a profit of $12. So that was pretty cool. And then on eBay, I had a great sale and I talked about this on my Instagram because this sale on this one piece was a $75 sale. And so was that seven piece bundle on Poshmark. That was also a $75 sale. So I just kind of talked on my Instagram about, you know, different business models and how all of us are running our reselling businesses differently. And I think that's really cool. One thing I'll never forget is Courtney from Common Tags. She often says in her videos that she has a really hard time watching videos from resellers when they say like, you have to do this or stop doing that. And they state their opinions as definitive fact. Um, and she was like, you know, I'm never going to make claims that you have to do things a certain way because things work differently for everyone. Everyone's in a different situation. Everyone's in a different context. And I love that. And I feel like I've really taken that to heart after hearing her say that my business model isn't necessarily going to work for you. Your business model isn't necessarily going to work for me. And I think that just showing kind of that seven piece bundle that sold for $75 on Poshmark and this one item that sold on eBay for $75, they're both different ways to make $75 at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Would I love to consistently sell $75 items and not have to do these seven piece bundles for $75? Absolutely. But am I finding this kind of stuff that readily in my community? No, I'm not. And on top of that, I, you know, am a part-time reseller. I have a full-time job. I'm raising two kids. I have a lot of other responsibilities outside of this little part of my life. And so, you know, whereas some people do have time to scour the internet and find some really great deals and whatnot. I don't have that kind of time. And so I'm really happy with my seven piece bundle where I make $75 and I'm happy with the occasional one item sale of $75 as well. They're both equally as amazing to me. And I guess the point of me reiterating this is that one, you should follow me on Instagram, <laughs> but two, don't let anyone tell you how to run your business and don't feel bad or apologetic for how you're running your business because your business is yours. And that is the really cool thing about having a reselling business in general and being your own boss is that you get to write your own rules. So just a little pep talk for the day, but this $75 item that sold on eBay was this pair of frame denim jeans and they were the Le Garçon. I'm so bad at French. I don't even, I don't even know why I tried, but they were these distressed skinny jeans in a size 28. They did sell for my full asking price of $74 and 99 cents and they paid for shipping. So I ended up making $63 and 23 cents. This was actually this pair of jeans second time being sold. The first time that they sold on eBay, someone wanted to return them because they just didn't fit them well. Um, I'm hoping that this time sticks. I mean, it was delivered and I haven't heard anything. So I'm hoping that this time it was a winner. This pair of jeans, when I got it returned, I actually forgot to cross list this pair of jeans from eBay to like Poshmark and Mercari and stuff. So I only had it on eBay. I probably should have cross listed it over to Poshmark, but comps for this particular pair of jeans definitely looked much lower on Poshmark. And in fact, I'm pretty shocked that they sold at $75 because that's definitely on the higher end of the comps for this pair of jeans from Frame. So that's not to say all jeans by Frame will sell for this price, but I'm just lucky that these did. It kind of seemed like it was a new eBay user. So maybe they just didn't know. Maybe they didn't know that you can make offers and stuff. Whatever the situation was, I'm happy to have made the sale. I actually just went sourcing um, not too long ago where my daughter does gymnastics. There's like another consignment store there that I go to way too often. And I picked up like two or three pairs of frame jeans there. I did pay up for them, but I am 
am hoping for at least like a $50 sales price on those. So that was really exciting. And those frame denim jeans I got, believe it or not, in a thread up denim rescue box. It was in the first denim rescue box that I did. My second one was atrocious. Some of you may remember it, but I will link the better denim rescue box unboxing right here so you can check it out. It's so hit or miss with those rescue boxes from thread up. For the most part, I have had mainly great experiences, but it's a very mixed bag. All right, the last thing to sell on eBay and in general on October 13th was this pair of Dr. Scholl's brown Avalon slide-on wedges, and they had like these little rings kind of like along the T-strap of the top, whatever. Um, they were in a size six and a half. These sold for $12.60. They paid for shipping. I made $9.98. I did get those at the consignment store. I paid less than two bucks for them, but I'm not picking up Dr. Scholl's anymore. I had never tried it before. And because I was paying so little for them, I was like, yeah, I'll give them a shot. They're in really great condition. They're not worth a lot. So now I know, and I know because I went through the process of trying to sell them. <laughs> and then on Wednesday, October 14th, I had one sale over on Poshmark and it was the Stella and Sienna Peter Pan collar velvet dress in a size 10. That sold for $15. And I say using my closet clear out method because I had sent out closet clear out messages about this dress the day before when it was closet clear out and she didn't see it until Wednesday. So she was like, I do still want, you know, this dress at that price. I know it's probably too late because it's not closet clear out anymore. And I was like, it's fine. I'll just send you an offer to like her. So I ate the cost of discounted shipping, which was $2.12. So my profit on that dress was $9.88. A common question I get about cross-listing because I do cross-list all of my items over from Poshmark to my other platforms using List Perfectly. A common question I get is, don't you get scared that you're gonna sell the item on multiple platforms? And my answer is always no. Like usually, first of all, like I don't have anything that like so many people want that it's being sold on platforms as soon as I list them or anything like that. Um, so usually that's not an issue. And also what I usually do is when I, can I say usually more? My goodness. But what I'll do is when something does sell on any given platform, right then and there, I'll just go to the other platforms and delete it. Um, there is an easier way using List Perfectly. If you list directly into List Perfectly's database, then they have a really cool way where um, you can say that the item has sold and then it'll pop up all the different windows of the different platforms where that item is still being sold and you can you know end the listing really quickly that way i don't utilize list perfectly in that way i should but i don't yet so i have to manually go in and delete the listing on the other platforms for whatever reason with this dress i forgot to so probably like the day after or two days later, it did sell on eBay for my full asking price. And I was like, oh, oh no, no. <laughs> like literally the worst thing that could happen and the worst platform that it could happen on. So what I did was I reached out to the buyer like right away as soon as I saw the sale come in. And I said, listen, I'm so sorry. This item has sold already on another platform. If there's anything else in my closet that you would want up to X amount. And I always make that amount like a little higher than what the value of the original thing that they bought was because I'm trying to like, you know, that's my apology to them. It's like, you can have something a little bit better, but not have to pay for, you know, the extra cost or whatever. Um, and she was like, it's okay. Like you can just cancel. I actually was getting it for my daughter for her Halloween costume. And hopefully I can find something else. And we kind of messaged back and forth throughout the day. And she told me that she did find something better on Amazon. So I was really happy to hear that. And I was able to cancel the sale and say that the buyer requested I cancel because she did. I just like coaxed her gently in that direction. <laughs> And the reason why that's important is because if you have to cancel a sale and you say that it was because like you, you know, lost it or because you realized it was damaged or something, you actually get a ding to your eBay account, which it's pretty hard to recover from. And there are perks to like not getting dings. All that to say it worked out, but you do need to be really diligent about deleting your items from other platforms if you are planning on cross-listing. So just another PSA for the day. And then on eBay, I had a couple really dinky sales um, because they were both put out to auction. And this was because I was relisting everything on Poshmark and some of these things just were not worth a lot and I just wanted to get them out. So the first thing was this Hannah Anderson pink tank top in a size extra small. This I put out to auction for a dollar 
$1.99, which I got the one bid on. So after they paid for shipping and they did end up paying a little bit more than they needed to, I made $2.43. That one I got at like a local thrift store. Why? Why did I feel the need to buy that? I don't know. I probably lost, you know, a little bit of money on that one. And then the last thing to sell was this Camellia. I don't know what that is. I feel like you can find this brand at like TJ Maxx, but it was this gray spaced eye long sleeve t-shirt in a size small. And this one sold again for $1.99. It got the one bid. Um, they paid for shipping. They paid a little bit more than they needed to. And so I made $2.45 on that. I got that for free from a friend at church. And so I am more than happy with that. Um, for me, when I do put stuff out to auction, especially if it's stuff that I just want to get rid of, I just go ahead and price it really low because again, I'm just trying to get a move on. Um, you can select a setting on eBay to say that you want something to automatically relist as an auction item for eight weeks. Make sure that you press that so that you don't have to go in every single week and like restart your auctions. That's pretty annoying. And then my second tip would be charge a little bit more for shipping because what you don't want is to only get the one bid and then realize you didn't charge enough for shipping. So now you're like for real losing money on that sale. So just a couple tips about running auctions on eBay. On October 15th, which was a Thursday, I had a couple sales on Poshmark. The first one being this J Jill Pure Jill Wool Blend Open Front Cardigan in a size medium. It had some sort of print to it. Um, this did come from the consignment store and it was listed for 105 days. I had not yet gotten around to relisting this and it sold before I could. I probably would have relisted it like the next day had it not sold on the 15th. So that was really exciting that I didn't have to go through that process, but it sold for $20. That was the offer sent to me. So I made 16 and it did come from the consignment store. So I have less than a dollar into that. The next thing to sell was a pair of jeans from Chico's and it was the So Slimming Chico's Girlfriend Ankle Jeans in a size 0 0.5. Chico's does use vanity size so like in regular sizing vernacular that's more of like a size six they sold for twenty dollars i made sixteen dollars on those jeans and they also came from the consignment store so i had less than a dollar into those and then on mercari i sold this pair of javiana's navy soul purple flip-flops they sold for eleven dollars that was the offer sent to me and i had free shipping on them because they were like really lightweight i mean they were flip-flops so um shipping was four dollars and 32 cents i do go through pirate ship for my mercari sales usually mercari asks way too much for shipping if something is right at one pound it is actually a pretty good deal to go through mercari but otherwise they are charging way too much so i usually go through pirate ship and i ended up making four dollars and 96 cents on that sale i did get that at the consignment store too so less than two dollars into them i had never tried selling javianas before that was my first time finding them so i felt like i had heard other resellers talk about it apparently just a regular pair of flip-flops that are kind of dirty is not the best pair of javianas to pick up so now i know the more you know on friday the 16th this is when i officially finished relisting my entire poshmark closet and i was so happy it was like so over the moon that i was like you know what I'm gonna run a sale. So I let people know on YouTube in like the little community tab and I put a post about it on my Instagram and you guys really showed up. I'm really so thankful for anyone who came to my closet and shopped it. You guys are amazing. So I ran a 50% off sale of anything that was $10 or more and these are the things that sold. The first thing was the Sanctuary Faux Suede Shearling Open Vest in a size small. That was originally listed for $34, but Karina, Karina, thank you so much, got it for $17, so I made $13.60 on that. I picked that up at the consignment store near my daughter's gymnastics, so I probably did have like four, five, six dollars into that. Not making much of a profit, but I am definitely still making some, and I'm so happy that Karina has this beautiful piece for the fall and winter now, because this is like the perfect vest for fall. And then the next thing to sell was a two-piece bundle. This went to Amy, so Amy me, thank you so much and she got this banana republic black wrap dress with like a belted waist that was in a size small i did get that at a goodwill like over a year ago but i just thought it was so classy and perfect for the office and that's why i picked it up and then the next thing to sell was this gap black floral spaghetti strap knee length dress in a size small that one like was smocked on the back it gave me such like 90s grunge vibes i loved it and i actually have sold this exact dress before um that one did come from the consignment store Store where I paid less than a dollar for everything and the bundle sold for $25 because the original bundle price was 50 so I made $20 off of those two dresses and I couldn't be happier Amy thank you so much the next two 
piece bundle to sell. I actually really love both of these pieces and I'm really happy that they went to Angel. So Angel, thank you so much. The first piece was this pair of Zara knit black high rise crop palazzo pants in a size small. These were so cool. They looked so comfy, but they would also be perfect for like the office or something like that. Those did come from the consignment store. So less than a dollar into those. And then the next piece was this pair of Athleta Gleam Black Chattanooga to Town tights or like leggings in a size small. I never understood why some companies like Lululemon and Athleta, I never understood why they called leggings tights. Let me know in the comments down below if you know why that is or even what the difference is between the two. Um, I only knew that these were called tights because I was able to find the style name online. But anyway, this bundle sold for $41 to Angel, so I made $32.80. Angel, you are a doll. I hope you love both pieces. And then the next bundle was also a two-piece bundle. The first item was this pair of Oshkosh Bagosh blue adjustable waist chinos in a size 12 months. My son actually wore these and they were a gift from the fine arts coordinator in my district from like the band teacher at my school literally like one of my most favorite people in the world. And he got my son the cutest little outfit from Oshkosh Bagosh when he was born. So my son did wear this and I love the idea that I'm able to move these onto another home for another child to use. I just think that that's beautiful. That is something that I relisted and then 24 days after relisting it sold. The next item to sell was this Columbia waterproof full zip jacket in a size 2XL for men that was also relisted and it took 45 days to sell after being relisted. That bundle sold for $31 to Rachel. So Rachel, thank you so much. And I made $24.80. Really quickly, I wanted to touch on the fact that you'll notice that some of the bundles that sold for me have items for different types of people. So for example, this particular bundle had like a baby's piece and a men's piece. I know some people like to have like a separate Poshmark closet for like their men's stuff and then like a separate Poshmark closet for women's stuff. I just put it all together because I don't know about you when I shop, especially on like Poshmark or Kidizen or something like that. I like am looking not just for my kids, but I'm looking for myself too. And sometimes I'm looking for my husband and I will put together bundles where there's something for everyone. So for me personally, I just like like the ease of only having one Poshmark closet. And I think I actually probably make more sales that way because it's not a huge inconvenience to have all this stuff in my Poshmark closet. People can just use the filters in the search function to look for what they wanna look for. If they don't wanna see kids stuff, they don't have to. So that's just my personal opinion. That's me, you do you. <laughs> so again, Rachel, thank you so much for that. The next thing to sell was not actually because of my sale, but it was also closet clear out this Friday. So this was a closet clear out sale. And it was a Scap Factory hooded pullover water resistant coat in a size large for kids. This sold for $15 using my closet clear out method. So I made $12 off of that. And that did come from the consignment store. So I had less than a dollar into it. The Columbia jacket also came from the consignment stores. I had less than a dollar into that too, which was a great pickup. The next bundle to sell was a three piece bundle. This went to Christine. So Christine, thank you so much. The first piece was by the brand Mix by 41 Hawthorne. 41 Hawthorne is one of those brands that is carried in Stitch Fix boxes. It might also be carried at like Nordstrom Rack or something like that, but it was this draped open front cardigan in a size small. It was actually really cool and it was lightweight, um, had large pockets, which I love. The next item to sell was this Chaps Southwestern print button-up sweater jacket in a size large. This I did pick up at a Goodwill. I remember when I went with like my mom and mother-in-law, like definitely maybe sometime in the end of 2019. I thought it was such a cool piece and my mom and my mother-in-law were like, why? Why are you getting that? But I knew someone would get it and I'm glad that Christine got it. And then the last thing to sell was this honey and lace blue floral scoop neck tunic in a size medium. This also came from the consignment store. So I have less than a dollar into it. And I've never heard of this brand before. It looks like it's just like a boutique brand or something, but I thought it was cute. Kind of reminded me of like LuLaRoe. And the bundle sold for $38. I made $30.40 and Christine, your doll. Thank you so much. The next two things to sell were because of closet clear out. So the first one was this 
American Eagle Distressed Denim Mini Skirt in a size zero. I did get that at the consignment store, so I have less than a dollar into it. It sold for $12 and I made $9.05. I don't, you know, I people aren't really wearing mini skirts like that and yeah, I don't need to be picking that kind of stuff up anymore. The next thing to sell was actually something that I believe my mother-in-law gave me and it was this Pursuits Limited 100% Merino Wool Turtleneck Sweater in a size medium. That sold for $20 using my closet clear out method and so I made $16 on it. I am like 98% sure that this was vintage but I had no way of proving it so that's why I didn't say that it was vintage. I feel really uncomfortable calling things vintage if they're not. Let me know what you do in that case in the comment section down below do you just say that it's vintage if you think that it is or do you maybe just like you know write something about the fact that you think it's vintage in the description i don't know like it probably could have gotten a little bit more if i did say that it was vintage but it is what it is I had another three-piece bundle, and this was actually to a viewer who also has a YouTube channel. Her name is Macy, and her YouTube channel is Blue Consignment. Definitely make sure that you check it out because she has some really great videos, some of which are pretty similar to this particular one. She does do what sold videos as well, and I think it's really great to watch what sold videos from an array of different resellers so that you're not just stuck on like what's selling for one person, but it's good to hear what's selling for a ton of different people. So um, definitely make sure that you check out her channel I will link it actually down in the description below but I actually messed up Macy's order so I'll explain here in a second the first item that sold to her was this American Eagle soft and sexy purple maxi dress this was from the consignment store so I had less than a dollar into it and it sold 92 days after being relisted I sent her the wrong dress <laughs> so I you know was pulling inventory I saw a purple dress from American Eagle but I accidentally sent her like a knee length one with cold shoulders not at all like this dress right here so um she reached out to me she was so sweet and she was like I think you sent the wrong dress and I was like of course I did because I had pulled like a billion items that day so she gave me her address I just shipped it to her and I told her to just keep the dress that I accidentally sent um and then that way she could just resell it on her own but I didn't want her to have to pay to ship it back to me when I was the one who made the mistake so she has both of those dresses now and then the next piece that she got I thought this was so cute I got this at the consignment store where my daughter does gymnastics and it was this gap red tweed houndstooth long sleeve dress in a size two this literally sold the day that I relisted it, which was really cool. And you'll notice actually that there is another Gap piece that sold within like a day or two of me relisting it. So don't turn your nose up at Gap. People know and like Gap. But anyway, um, that was such a sweet dress. I could see that being perfect for the holidays. And then the last thing that she bought was this dress from Maurice's and it was this red printed spaghetti strap maxi dress in a size small. That was only my second time picking up Maurice's. Um, the first item that I picked up was like this really chunky, cardigan and it was in like a plus size so that actually sold pretty well for me and I do think with Maurice's you want to stay on the bigger side if possible because this particular dress didn't get a whole lot of attention but I'm glad that Macy got it it was a cute dress it just I think like I said it was smaller and all that kind of stuff so this bundle sold for $37 I made $29.60 Macy thank you so much and thank you so much for being understanding about that dress I am so sorry that I messed that up the next thing to sell sold to Alexandra and it was this lovers and friends dress um, that's a brand sold on the website revolve and it was this off the shoulder dress in a size small I think it was called like the vacation I don't know it, there was a name to the dress I had it in the listing and I don't have it right now but this sold for $25 and I made $20 off of it it sold 66 days after being relisted and Alexandra already got the dress and posted a picture of herself in it on Instagram I'm gonna put that right here because she looks so stinking cute and I just want to thank her so much for making this purchase for me I was so excited when I found this dress at a Goodwill because I had never found this brand before and I remember pricing it super high because I was like someone's gonna buy it it's from revolve um it got a lot of attention but there were a lot of the same exact dress being sold at the time so the market was pretty saturated with it but i am glad that it finally did sell to a viewer and alexandra you really did look so perfect in that dress so thank you so much for your purchase and then the last bundle of the day for my 50 percent off sale went to debbie so debbie thank you so much and she got three pieces they were all men's pieces i believe the first one was this vineyard vines navy crew neck pullover sweater in a size medium i think i got that from one of my friends that i worked at a consignment deal with from church so that was really great that she was able to snatch that up the next thing was this newest tags report collection long sleeve gray shirt in a size medium i 
I think I got that at a Plato's Closet 90% off clearance sale. I don't remember, but it turns out it's not a very good brand. So don't pick it up if you see it. It's not really worth much. And then the last thing that I sold in this bundle was this Newest Tags Express Purple Sherpa Funnel Neck Sweater. This actually came from the old theater director at my school. He has since moved to a different district, but we were doing a garage sale to raise money for our theater program. This was one of the items that he donated for it. So a portion of this sale will go to my theater program at school. The bundle sold for $44. I made $35.20. Debbie, I hope that you love everything. You got some really great pieces. And then on eBay, I had a few sales as well. So basically like Friday the 16th was a, it was a good day. And typically Fridays are not a very good sales day for me. So this was a pleasant surprise. But the first thing to sell was this pair of Miss Me boot cut bedazzled jeans in a size 27. I was running a 35% off sale in my eBay store over the weekend just to, again, try to move out some of these pieces that I had just relisted. And it sold for my 35% off price, which was $32.49. They paid for shipping. I made $27.08 on those. And I have had those for quite some time. I don't remember where exactly I got this particular pair of Miss Me jeans, but I don't really care because they're gone now. The next thing to sell was this Aritzia Wilfred Free Long Sleeve Crop Top. It sold for $11.69, which again, I think was my 35% off price. They paid for shipping. I made $10.34. That is the second time this item has been sold. The first time the person opened a return because she said it was too short on her. And I was like, but it says crop top in the title. So it's okay. It actually sold for more the second time around. I think the first time I sold it for like $10. And then the next thing to sell was actually a bundle of video games. It was like two Grand Theft Auto video games plus a game called Crimson Skies. I don't even remember right now what console it was for, but my library gives out these like free book coupons all the time for like everything. And they have a used bookstore in the basement of the library. And sometimes I'll just collect the little coupons and see if I can find books to resell. Um, one day they just had a ton of video games. So I just picked up a bunch. I don't know anything about video games. <laughs> I play a few, but I don't know enough to know like what's worth money. So I lotted these three together because they were for the same console. And I sent out offers to watchers on it for $11.90. That was like a little bit more of a discount on top of the 30 percent off sale that I was running and then I don't know what I was thinking but I only had them pay two dollars for shipping when in fact it cost five dollars and eight cents to ship out so I made six dollars and 87 cents off of that bundle plus it was a promoted listing at one percent so six dollars and 87 cents I'm still cool with it because you know it's like I didn't spend any money on that stuff I got all that for free at the library so that was cool and then the last thing to sell on eBay was this Wes and Willie boombox graphic t-shirt in a size five. I also sent out offers to watchers on this one. So the offer was $6.90. They paid for shipping. I made $6.23. I had less than a dollar into that because it did come from the consignment store and I just thought it was really cute. So there you go. On Saturday, October 17th, I had one bundle sale on Poshmark. The first item was this Gap navy full zip sweater in a size medium. This was my husband's and he had worn it for like a decade and it was pretty faded from wash wear and stuff. I noted all of that in the listing. This sold two days after I relisted it. So, you know, again, Gap can do really well. And the second item to sell in this bundle was this Forever 21 floral scoop neck dress and it had like an opening in the back. This was in a size small. That one sold 23 days after being relisted. And this is just another example of a bundle with like a men's piece and a woman's piece. So you never know. The bundle sold for $25. That was the offer. I believe that was sent to me. So I made $20 on that. And then on eBay, I sold this Banana Republic Navy 100% wool sweater jacket in a size large. This had like three flaws in it. There were like two holes and then like the pocket was coming undone. I picked it up at a local thrift store last December and I didn't realize when I picked it up that it had all these flaws. Plus it was super heavy, but I was able to like shove it into a padded flat rate envelope. So I sent out offers to watchers on this for $14.90. They paid for shipping. I made a profit of $11.76 on it and it did sell via promoted listings at 1%. So that offer was an offer that I sent even after the 35% off discount. I just needed it gone because it was so flawed like I said. If it weren't flawed it would be worth a lot more. And then on Mercari I had my second and last Mercari sale of the week. I actually didn't have any Kittizen or Thread Up sales. However, 
this particular week that we're in, I have sold some really good pieces over on ThreadUp for like good money. Um, I probably can't talk about those for another two weeks because you have to wait for two weeks to pass so that, you know, ThreadUp knows that the item's not going to get returned to them and then you get your payout. But if these pieces go through, you know, it'll be a good week over on ThreadUp in a couple what solds from now. But on Mercari, I sold this pair of Athleta Batona black soft pull on pants in a size small. I got an offer on these for $26, literally the day that I cross listed them over to Mercari. And I did say that I would pay for shipping, which was $5.52. So I made $16.83 on those. They were from the consignment store, so I have less than a dollar into them. And they didn't really get any attention on Poshmark. Like, even even when I had them listed the first time around, no likes or anything like that. Possibly I had them priced too high, but like I said, the second I cross-listed them over to Mercari, I made a quick $16.83. So that's why I do love cross-listing. I do love List Perfectly, and I actually have a couple videos out about List Perfectly that I've made in the last few weeks because I have partnered with them in this giveaway. So if you're not using List Perfectly yet and you want to try it out, or if you are a List Perfectly member but you want to join the referral program then you can enter my giveaway and I will link a video right here explaining the giveaway as well as what you need to do to enter and you have until November 3rd I believe so you've still got some time the last day of sales was October 18th which was a Sunday I had a couple great sales over on Poshmark and that's because it was closet clear out again so the first sale of the day was a bundle sale but I do think it was because of closet clear out because someone liked an item I sent them my closet clear out message and then they ended up putting more stuff in their bundles so that was really exciting kind of like what happened on Tuesday but the first of the four pieces was this Steve Madden black Henley tank top in a size extra small this was in my four for $25 sale because it's a tank top I got this for free from a friend at church so you know that's pure profit there um, the second thing to sell was this intro fringe scoop neck boho top with like a flare sleeve and the fringe was on the back actually entro is like a boutique brand this sold eight days after being relisted and it did come from the consignment store so i had less than a dollar into that one the next piece to sell was also from the consignment store and it was a sanctuary white shoulder embroidered shirt in a size small this had like a cold shoulder and the strap was hemmed a little bit but i made sure to take pictures and note that in the description and then the last thing to sell was also in my four for $25 sale and it was this loft beige linen blend three-fourth sleeve sweater in a size extra small extremely lightweight it took 60 days after being relisted to sell and if you're wondering how I know exactly how many days it takes something to sell you can actually download your sales report on Poshmark and they'll give you a spreadsheet with all the information about like you know what sold how long it took to sell um, who it sold to all that kind of stuff but then what I do with that spreadsheet is I import it into to an app called Seller Insight. And I'll link that video right here. But what the app does is it takes all of that information and it presents it to you in beautiful graph and chart form. And so I use that to, you know, help me make this video and write down like how long it took things to sell and all that stuff. Cause it's a lot easier to do it with the app than it is with that very cumbersome spreadsheet. So the next thing to sell was this pair of stride right gray leather Dalton walking shoes in a size four and it's like you know an infant size four. Um, these were listed for 87 days so I had not yet gotten around to relisting them. This is from like the very last time I went to a Goodwill um, which was a while ago so they sold for $15 using my closet clear out method and I made $12. The next thing to sell was this gap tan chunky crew neck sweater in a size small this was probably the most exciting sale of the week for me because it was the first new listing that I had done in over three months and it sold the day that I listed it. So that was so exciting. It sold for $15 using my closet clear out method and I made $12 off of that. So again, Gap, it can be a winner. That's the third item that I've talked about in this video alone that sold within you know two days of me either listing it or relisting it. So whatever that's worth to you, I personally do enjoy wearing Gap and selling Gap, and so 
The next thing to sell was this two-piece jumper by the brand Youngland, and it was so cute. It had like a little bunny on the little jumper, and then there was like a long sleeve white shirt that goes underneath it. This was in a size four, and it sold for $10 using my closet clear-out method, so I made $7.05. And actually, I had sent out that closet clear-out method on Friday. She got back to me on Saturday and was like, I'm so sorry, like I want this. Can I still get it at that price? And I was like, well, if you want, like I can just send you the offer again tomorrow or you can do the closet clear out thing tomorrow and you can still get it at that price with discounted shipping because I didn't really want to sell it for ten dollars and eat the cost of shipping because then I'd make like four dollars or something so she was like okay yeah that's totally fine so I made sure to message her the next day and remind her that it was closet clear out she didn't get back to me till like 9 or 10 p.m but she did get back to me and she was like yes please do it I'm so sorry I've been really busy so I was able to make seven dollars and five cents off of that and I did get that at the consignment store for less than a dollar that took 21 days to sell after being relisted and the last item to sell for the week was also the most random sale and it was on eBay it was this new human plus kind body souffle it was like a lotion basically it sold for six dollars and 49 cents which was the 35 percent off price um they paid for shipping so i made five dollars and 67 cents on that i actually got that in a fab fit fun box i just didn't really have a use for it i don't really like um like lotions that are heavily scented so i just decided to list it it took forever like i mean not forever but like seven months to sell but it's gone and i made a little money off of it so that's pretty cool so those were my sales for the week i'd love to know how sales have been for you let me know in the comment section down below but let's break it down a little bit so on poshmark i sold 40 items largely mainly due to the sale that i was running and i made a net sale so again this is my number after all of the fees after all the shipping discounts I made a net sales of $444.66. On eBay, I sold 10 items for a net sales of $146.04. On Mercari, I had two sales with a total of $21.79. Again, no kid is in her thread up sales, but that's okay. So the total for the week was 52 sales and I made a profit, so a net sales of $612.49. The only number that I wasn't able to subtract from that is my cost of goods. As you've heard me share in this video, a lot of my items I was given for free by different people or I was picking stuff up for like under a dollar. So I would estimate that, you know, let's see, 52 pieces. I would estimate that I probably spent like 60, 70 dollars on my cost of goods. So you could bring my total down to like 550 plus um but yeah that's my total for the week that's how much i get to put in my bank account which is really exciting because it is it's just exciting to put money in your bank account and then just to kind of give you some information about some other things um of all of the sales this week of the 52 10 of them were a result of closet clear out whether it was a direct like you know we went through closet clear out they got discounted shipping through poshmark or whether it was a bundle that was started because i sent them a message about closet clear clear out whatever the deal 10 of these sales were because of my closet clear out method so if you haven't checked out that video yet make sure you do 47 of the 52 pieces that sold this week were items that i had relisted which makes sense because by this week like the majority of the items in my closet were relisted items versus you know items that hadn't been relisted yet but still i think that's really cool that that many relisted items sold and then finally i always like to update you on how i'm doing with items that i picked up from the consignment store where i shopped by the bag i picked up over a thousand pieces from them i should have kept better count of like how many pieces exactly but between like all the clothes and shoes and accessories at least like I would say 1100 if not more pieces. I paid $1,400 for everything and I have so far sold, let's see, this week I sold 22 items from that consignment store and that brings me to a total of 263 items sold from that consignment store in general since I've started listing items from that place and I've made $4,185.79. So if you subtract my initial investment of $1,400, that's still a pretty awesome amount so it's really proving to have been one of my best and most profitable sourcing opportunities. A lot of those pieces went to thread up as well, and I still have 
a ton of that stuff to list. So I'm super excited about what's to come now that I get to list new items and I have been listing new items. And a lot of the items are higher ticket items just because I somehow fell into some of those things. And because I'm trying to prioritize my like fall and winter pieces since that's what people are looking for right now. And those tend to be a little bit more expensive, you know, because there's a little bit more that goes into the construction of a winter jacket than like a simple tank top for the summer. So I am excited about what's to come in the next few weeks. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are staying healthy and also just exercising your mind as well because I know that right now is just a really rough time for a lot of us. There's a lot going on in the world, a lot to kind of be anxious and stressed out over. So make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Make sure you're taking time out for yourself. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure that you hit that like button and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!